Hi everyone, welcome to Edupedia World. I am C. Radhika Sengal. So in the last sessions we discuss why such fluctuation risk occurs, what are the different types of risk. In today's class we are going to discuss that how to hedge against this risk, how the importers and exporters use different hedging methods to safeguard them against the foreign exchange loss. So there are various methods to hedge. First is forward market hedge. Forward market hedge is by investing into the forward market. Leading, lagging. Leading means making the payment in advance. And uh, if you are assuming that the rate will increase or will fluctuate. Depending that you are an importer and exporter. Lagging, money market hedge, currency swap, exposure netting, matching and currency invoicing. So we will discuss all these methods one by one. Let's we'll start with forward market hedge. I think since we have already started this thing in derivatives and also discussed it earlier. Forward market hedge is simply by entering into a contract with the another party. So the other party could be a bank, right? In which there is a contract that this much amount is to be delivered at this much rate. So there is a fixed rate after a specified period of time. So in this way, whatever the risk exposure is there, that the rate may be fluctuated beyond the limit, this could be hedged by entering into such contract. So a forward contract is a binding bilateral contract. So why it is binding? Because in this parties, both the parties have to fulfill their commitments. No party could back up and could has an option that either they has go into the contract or not to perform. Both the parties have to perform their respective obligations. The next is leading. So I'm not taking any example because we have already discussed forward market hedge in detail in previous classes. Leading means making the payment in advance. So why an importer or an exporter will make a payment in advance? So let's talk about importer first. An importer in case makes a lead payment will get a benefit of cash discount. But there is an additional cost also because if he has to make the payment today instead of availing that credit period, he will has to borrow that amount and the borrow includes the interest amount also. So Though there is a profit that he'll enjoy the cash discount, but there is an interest cost burden for making the payment early. And why an importer will make a lead payment? Because might be he is expecting that in future his home currency will be discounted and the foreign currency will strengthen in future. So before making such an analysis, the importer will compare the advantage of the cash discount with the interest burden cost and also compare it that how much amount he has to pay while entering into a forward contract. That is any other option will be compared and the option which has to make the lease payment and hedge him against the foreign exchange fluctuation risk will be preferred. So let's do an example. An Indian importer has to make a payment of dollar one lakh import bill to party three months from now. The spot rate is 45.40 to 45.80. So when two rates are returned, the first is the bid rate, that is the buying rate for the bank. And the next is the ask rate. So it's always bid to ask. The three months forward rate of dollar one is 46.10 to 46.75. The US party is willing to offer a cash discount of 2% for immediate payment. The INR loan borrowing rate is 14%. So in case you avail that 2% discount, you have to pay 14% on that borrowed amount. Advise the importer whether he should enter into a forward contract or make lead payment today. So in case he has to make a lead payment today, then we'll compare that how much advantage he has, that what is the net payment he has to make while making a net lead payment and what is the payment he has to make if he enters into a forward contract. So option one is to make a lead payment. He has to pay 1 lakh less the 2% cash discount if you make the payment immediately multiply by so there are two rates buying rate and selling rate an importer has to buy from the bank that is he has to take the selling rate of bank to make that he needs 1 lakh immediately so bank will sell at 45.80 the ask rate so how much payment he has to pay able today 1 lakh less 2% of 1 lakh multiply by 45.80 which is equals to 44,88,400. This much amount he has to borrow from the bank also. So this will borrowed be at 14% rate for three months, which will be equal to the interest amount of 1,57,094 rupees. So in case he goes for lee payment, the importer has to make a total payment of rupees 
46,45,494. So this is the option one. Next option is he can enter into a forward market hit. In the given information, what is the three months ask rate? Forward rate is 46.75. So there will be no cash discount while making a forward payment. So 1 lakh into 46.75 will be equal to 46,75,000. So if you go for option 1, the total payment is 46,45,494. While in a forward market, he has to pay a payment of 46,75,000. So which option is more beneficial for the importer? To make the lead payment today is better. So likewise is a scenario for an exporter. An exporter will receive money in future. Whatever money he will receive, in case he receives a lead payment that he can invest in the home market and can earn interest amount over it. The next is if he receives a money in forward market. So he'll compare that where he will receive more. Whether the amount received today plus the interest receivable on that amount which is being invested for that period is more or the amount receivable in the forward market as more. Whichever is option is beneficial will be opted by the exporter. So leading is one of the method of hedging. The next method is lagging, which is just opposite of leading. Leading is making the payment early. Lagging is delaying the payment. So if a party delays the payment, he has to bear the burden of interest or you can say penalty, which is being charged by the foreign party. And why such an option is preferred, why the person lag might be in the current scenario, the spot rate is so high and you are expecting that in the nearby future, your home currency will strengthen. So you have to make a less payment. So there is a comparison that how much payment you have to make in future, less the interest or the penalty burden of the foreign party. So this is from an importer point of view. Let's do an example to clear lagging also clear. A firm is contemplating import of a consignment from USA for a value of US dollar 10,000. The firm requires 90 days to make the payment. And what is the 0% credit period? The supplier has offered 60 days interest free credit and is willing to offer additional 30 days credit at an interest rate of 6%. So 60 days is an interest fee. However, he lacks the payment by 30 days, then he has to make an interest rate of 6% for one month. The banker of the firm offer a short loan for 30 days at 9% per annum. The banker's quotation for foreign exchanges, spot one USD, rupees 46. 60 days forward rate, that is if he makes the payment after 0% or interest free credit period, 46.20. And the 90 days forward rate is 46.35. You are required to advise the firm as to whether it should pay the supply in credit days, or avail the supplier offer to go to 90 days credit and show off your calculations. So first option is if we pay the end of 90 days, that is he accept the supplier's option to avail 60 days interest fee period and 30 days with interest period. So how much amount he has to pay after 90 days? So the interest rate for 30 days is 6% per annum. That means 0.5% per month. So for that one month, he has to pay 10,000 into 0.5% additional, which means he has to pay 10,050 after 90 days. If he pays 10,050, what is the forward rate after 90 days? 46.35. Again, we are going to take the ask rate. If it has been an exporter option, we are going to take the bid rate. So the amount to be payable at the end of 90 days is 4,65,818. So this is when he pays at the end of 90 days. Let's compare with the option two, which is pay at the end of 60 days. So if he pay at the end of 60 days, he has to borrow 30 days loan from an Indian bank to make an early payment of 30 days. So amount of loan to be paid at the end of 60 days is 10,000 because there is no such interest. It's an interest free credit period. This will be paid after 60 days. So 60 days forward rate is 46.20. So he has to take 46 lakh. 4,62,000 loan from the bank. Bank will charge at the rate of 9% on this 30 days loan, which is equal to 33,465. So how much amount he has to pay if he, ha if he makes the payment after 60 days? The total amount payable is 4,95,465. 
while if he pay at the end of 90 days he has to make a payment of 465818 so option 1 is preferable for the importer in comparison to the option 2 so lagging is preferable likewise if we think about exporter why an exporter will lag the payment again that he will invest that amount if the interest received on invested amount plus the amount receivable is more than the amount receivable which is realized after 90 days forward rate then he'll opt for lagging otherwise will not moreover if an exporter is assuming that the home currency will weaken in future so he will go for lagging so other methods we will discuss in next class thank you so much and keep smiling